loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Morgan and I make videos about luxury handbags fashion and lifestyle so if that's your thing please subscribe and turn on notifications I upload twice a week and I would love to have you here so today I'm doing my contemporary and other handbags collection so I did my designer handbag collection I'll link it up here but a lot of you requested the a lot of you requested my contemporary collection as well and it was just way too many bags to do in one video so I'm finally here with my contemporary collection video and I decided to throw in some of my like non-branded bags because some of those have really good stories I love to buy bags when I travel so a lot of them come from different countries that I've literally just gotten on the roadside or a little stall at a market I like sharing those stories because I think handbags are just meant to be self-expression and it doesn't matter if they're branded or not. You can really find beautiful options at every price point. Let's just get right into it. First bag is one of my favorites. This is from the brand Vanina. It's a brand out of Lebanon but they sell it like Bloomingdale's and on Net-A-Porter and this is just stunning. So you can fit a phone in here typically without a case but this is more so just for evenings it dresses up any outfit and I just think it's so beautiful it's really like a piece of jewelry and it's so special it's great for an event or you know it makes a really nice display item too it's one of the prettiest bags in my display cabinet and I just love looking at it and I also love using it second bag is also from Benina and I bought this one because I wanted a purple bag and I just thought this was so unique. I got it on sale when net a did their big sale and it's just such a beautiful bag. All of their bags are like works of art. Their contemporary bag I have is this Tory Burch handbag. I bought this one specifically as a travel bag so I honestly haven't used it yet. I wanted something at a lower price point that I could take traveling with me. This is such a great size. It doesn't have any branding on the back which is what I like because when I travel to a new country or when I'm traveling for a girls trip I don't take like my Chanel bags or something like that so I always like to have a mix of price points. This is something that even if I'm on a trip, if I want to go to a nice restaurant in the evening, it still transitions into that as well. But if I want to go exploring a city and I turn down the wrong alley, it's not going to attract the same attention as a Chanel bag would. So I can kind of go a little more carefree roaming around the city, which I love to do when I travel. and. This is just perfect for that need in my wardrobe. And I also got it on a great sale. If you want to know more about this bag, I have a video on it, so I'll pop it up here. And yeah, I think it's just the most buttery, soft, gorgeous, bubblegum pink bag. Fourth bag on my list is this Sophia Webster clutch. I love this because you put your hand through the clutch and it's just like a piece of arm jewelry. It's so beautiful. You also have a detachable wrist strap. I picked this up in London so I did get the vat back. I didn't get it on a discount but her bags are priced pretty well and they're very unique and this adds something special. This is like a conversation piece. Even though it's not like a luxury designer bag, this honestly draws so much attention when I wear it. It's just something so unique that you don't see often and the leather is very soft and smooth. That's one thing you do have to be a little careful. It's very easy to scratch this leather. It does come in different colors and she does them with like the embroidery here on the butterfly. So you have some different options if you are interested in this bag. This bag on my list is the, I think you say it, Kanas, K-A-A-N-A-S, Kanas, I don't know. Um, but it's this gorgeous straw bag. They do the most unique straw bags and this is just so pretty in the summer. And I did my how to tie a twilly video. I showed you how you could weave the twilly in and out through this straw and it just looks so feminine and so beautiful. This is one of those that you might want to line with a scarf in the summer. I got this on a really great sale on ASOS and you can often find these on sale on different websites. They are a little more pricey than just like a high street straw bag. I feel like they're so unique that it's worth that little extra price because you're really getting something special without paying luxury designer money. The sixth bag on my list is this really cute and fun Kate Spade ice cream truck bag. It has a strap that comes with it and I just thought this was the most darling little bag. Kate Spade does the most fun and unique like shapes of bags and they do the, at least one a season. So I mean, I would love to have those Chanel runway pieces, but for like 10 grand a piece, it's just not in my budget to get those like unique clutches that they make. And I feel like if you like that kind of fun, playful vibe, Kate Spade is a great brand to get a quality leather made fun bag like this. Of course I only recommend buying the ones that kind of suit your style and that you think are really fun because these are really like collector's item bags. They're a conversation starter and they're just so fun. 
have a few other Kate Spades that I'm currently selling. Any of the bags that I'm selling right now, I'm not including in this video because I'm not intending on keeping them. But if you do want to pop over to my Instagram, there's a highlight called pre-loved bags for sale. And that's where you can see what I have available left for sale. Ice cream is like literally one of my favorite treat foods and tacos is the other. So when they came out with the taco truck, I was dying. I was like, I have to get this bag. It's so funny. Like there's even a little chihuahua in the window there and it's got like the sauces and the menu. It's just so fun. Even the back has some detailing on it. And I appreciate about the fun Kate Spade bags is they don't just do the front and leave the back. A lot of these like really lower priced bags that come in like faux leather I bought from other brands don't hold up over time. The nice thing about at least going for a fun bag from Kate Spade is that it's made from real leather and it really does hold up much better. So I kind of feel that if I want to have a little bit of fun, I try to get them on sale if I can. They're usually under $400, so if you want to have a little fun and you have a larger collection and you have your bases covered, her little unique seasonal bags are just so cute and fun. To be quite honest, the rest of my contemporary and other bags are bags that are very occasional use. They're things I've collected over the years. I do generally use my designer bags the most and I don't buy contemporaries often. It has to be either for a specific purpose or just super unique. This bag on my list is this little cigar box bag with the beaded handle. The brand says Diva. I haven't been able to find it since I bought this. I got this in high school, I believe. If you've seen the scene from Legally Blonde, I think two it is, where she's in the convertible and in the back, there's all her luggage and it's in this print. It's from, This bag is from the same brand. So I saw that in the movie and when I saw that they came, at the time, our local department store, I think the name was still Parisians then, I think now the name is Belk back in Alabama where I was growing up, I saw this little bag and I was like, it's just like my Legally Blonde dream. I have a piece from the designer who did the bags in the movie. I was just like, I have to have it. I don't use it often. It actually smells like cigars inside. It's quite like overbearing. But as a display piece and as a collector's piece, this is one of my favorite bags. I don't even know if the company's around anymore or not. I haven't been able to find them in recent years, but I am just so happy to have this bag. This is one of those like collection bags that I will never get rid of. The ninth bag on my list is another Kate Spade. This is actually ostrich and I know I feel kind of bad that it's an exotic, but I got this at the outlet mall in Miami. It comes with a strap. It's like nicely divided inside too. It's a really great size for a daily use bag, but I just thought the color was so stunning and the shape is so ladylike and this was so unique. I had never really seen a bag like this and it was on such a great sale. It was like under $200 and I think the original price was around $800. I had it at such a good deal that I had to add it to my collection. I feel like the color maybe isn't coming across on camera but it's a really nice Tiffany blue tealish color. It has such a good vintage vibe that I thought it was such a dreamy bag. Next bag in my collection, similar to the Cult Gaia. So this is not from the Cult Gaia brand. This I got in just a boutique. And I'll tell you why I didn't mind this not being the Cult Gaia brand. I don't know if she's the originator of this design or not. From what I've heard, you can also get these kind of bags in markets in Bali. It was less than half the price of the Cult Gaia, so it's not exactly a fake because I don't feel it's like knocking off like a Chanel or something like that. It's just that this bag is made by several companies and you can get them in the markets in Bali anyway, so like why overpay so much for the brand name? I don't know, let me know your thoughts on that below. I don't support replicas or anything that takes a designer logo and puts it on a fake bag. I don't support that industry at all. But when it gets to this like gray area of like, did the designer start that style or did they not? I feel like that's a little bit of a murkier area and it's like, okay, then am I just going for the designer one to pay the designer price? I don't know. I don't know how you feel about this. I never claim that this is a cult guy one when I wear it, so. I don't try to pass it off as the designer version. But I also got one of these. I found this on Poshmark for like 50 bucks. I actually don't know what brand it is. I don't think it's called Gaia because, I mean, I don't think it would go for 50 bucks. But again, it was the same thing. And you can get these acrylic bags from a lot of brands from Cult Gaia being like the top level of them to you can get them from like little boutiques and markets around the world so this one probably came from like a market or something like that but I got it on Poshmark 
and I honestly don't use it that much but it is kind of fun and I'm honestly I'm glad I didn't buy the cult guy ones because I don't really use these two bags enough but they do look great in pictures so I do keep them around but they're not ones that I use so often that I would get the cost per wear out of the designer version. The next bag on my list is this gorgeous Kate Spade straw bag. So it has some like beading and embroidery. It's a gorgeous like peacock style. This is so pretty for when I go to weddings in India and I know like that's a very specific function but my fiance is Indian and we typically, you know, not this year but like typically we have a lot of weddings that we go to and this is such a gorgeous bag that matches with a lot of my Indian wear. It's also really pretty for summer just to dress up like a white dress. It's such a unique bag and a conversation starter. I really like when I go to events to wear like a conversation starter kind of a bag because I really feel like when you go to an event and you wear something that people go, oh, that's so unique. Like, tell me something about it. Like, that's a great way to speak to people that maybe you haven't met before. Also a really great way to approach someone. Like if you're at a wedding and you wanna to talk to someone you don't know, you could go up and compliment them on something unique that they're wearing. That's a great way to start a conversation. So. I like to give people that kind of peace in my outfit. It makes me a little more approachable. Next bag on my list is this really cool crystal clutch. So I got this from an Etsy seller years ago, like literally so many years ago. I can't even find the name of the seller anymore. It's honestly, it's on just like a cheap clutch and the strap is like nothing to write home about. It's very cheap. I typically try to put a different strap on it or just carry it in the hand when I use it. But this is just so fun and unique. I love Judith Lieber bags. If it was in my budget to have a bunch of Judith Lieber bags, I would. It's just not affordable at like $5,000 a bag for such a tiny thing that I'm gonna use maybe once a year. So this was under $350 when I bought it and I thought this is a great way to get that kind of unique look at a price that I could afford. This has been in my collection for a very long time. I think I've had this bag for at least eight or nine years now. It's just that little special piece. I think I should have included this in my designer bag collection. I don't know why I didn't. I got this from Australia. I went there on my trip in 2013. And what I like to do when I go to a country I haven't been to before is to find a local designer that makes handbags. So this is real leather and the hardware is vintage hardware. Now it hasn't held up great over time there's some marks on the hardware it did have a detachable strap which the loop on the strap broke so I need to take that to a leather doctor and figure it out but it's lined in this gorgeous suede it's just like this envelope clutch style the brand is called askew I think but it's spelled like a little like weird it's a dash e s q u e so it's kind of like a little play on it and they make really uniquely shaped leather bags they're still around today just beautiful leathers they they are on the upper end of like that contemporary range and they do have bags that go into that designer range. So this probably should have been in my designer bag collection video, but I kind of forgot because I haven't worn it in a long time um, since the strap is broken, but I really need to get it repaired because I really do just love this bag and it reminds me of my trip. Another brand I got on my trip to Australia is this little black clutch and I thought it was so unique because it had this like bracelet little thing so you can wear it. it. I know this is very out of character for me, but I love a unique bag. And the brand is now in what? I don't know if that is an Australian brand or not. Um, I probably should do some research on that. But I just thought it was so cute and I found it in this like local mixed brand boutique and I thought it was just something I had really never seen before because I bought this back in like 2013. You can detach the little thing. So you could use this chain strap as a strap to the bag or even, you know, just carry it as a clutch. I don't use this often but I don't get rid of it because it really reminds me of my trip and I really think it's one of the most unique bags that I have. Like it's super different and interesting so it's something that I keep around for occasional use and it's more of like a sentimental bag. The other bag I have is this little structured vintage bag. It's not branded. My aunt gave this to me. I was helping her clean out her closet. I love doing that for my family members. I'm the one who organizes all the closets in my family when I go home and she was getting rid of this and I was like, can I have it? I don't even think it's real leather, but it's just that kind of like really cool vintagey find that you would probably find 
in like a thrift shop or something like that or like a vintage store and I just loved that like I thought it was super unique and different so even though it's not branded I wanted to include it because I just think it's so cool and I just love this bag another bag in my collection is this vintage chain bag now mine is not in the most perfect condition there's some repair on the side here but these bags can be quite expensive it is an authentic one I believe this is from the 20s or the 30s I can't remember exactly now I got it at a vintage store just the style of bag for going out in the night and I just thought this was such a beautiful piece of handbag history don't really use it I think I've used it maybe twice in my life but and I keep it in this like velvet pouch because it's so precious to me when I have the room and I have the dream closet that I would love to have it's something that I would hang up in frame another little vintage pouch I have is this little satin black one I don't remember if it was my mom or my aunt who gave me this one but again it was when I was helping them clean out their closet I think it was my mom and she was gonna get rid of it and I was like that's just so cute like that vintage vibe I just love something like unique and small tiny bag is not from 2019 or whenever it started this is a tiny bag from a long time ago it's a thing handbag styles come and go and I like having a little bit of history next bag I have is my college clubbing bag this is a Betsy Johnson bag it's leather the hardware is really beat up you can see all the marks on it this was what I would wear out like to the clubs in New York City when I was in college and it has a gold chain on it so I wear it like crossbody or on the shoulder. If this got bumped into a wall, a drink spilt on it, it was like, it's fine. You know, I got it at a very good discount. I worked at Betsy Johnson so I got an employee discount. I love this bag. I got my use out of it and this just has such fond memories. I will keep it forever. The next bag I have is this Rebecca Minkoff. This is like the faux croc I believe. I keep this around for trips. It's a great like not very branded bag. You could also wear it on this side and it's so beat up. I wouldn't get anything for it. This is another one of those when I lived in New York and even when I lived in Miami I used a lot and it was just like a clubbing bag a just everything bag that I didn't have to worry about got it on a discount as well so it's just one that I keep around when I'm traveling and I just need a bag that I don't care if it really gets messed up now we'll get into some of the bags that I had in high school I kind of started out like a lot of girls do in like you know south or middle of America with my designer obsession starting with like Coach, Juicy, and Dooney and & Burke. So one of my favorite Coach bags with this tiny little baguette style with these rainbow suede and like CC logo dots. I was obsessed with this bag. It's the tiniest, cutest thing. I don't know how I kept it so white. There are some marks on it, but I still have it to this day because I just think it's so fun and like different and it's not the typical coach bag that you would go for. This one I'll definitely hold on to forever. Just the cutest little thing. Another coach bag from my high school days is this hobo style bag. It has a big red mark on it. Let me see if I can show you here. So I don't really use it, but it's just like memories. Like I couldn't sell it for like anything anyways, but I could wear it on this side if I really wanted to. It's just a big hobo slouchy style this was very in then a lot of girls had it in like just the brown CC kind of logo but of course I had to go multicolor pastel and I also have still to this day the sandals in this print that matches it just such a memory for me that matching set that I keep it in my collection next vintage coach in my collection is actually not mine and I didn't use it but my mom was cleaning out her closet she had this beige coach bag and I was like this is such classic vintage coach that, like I couldn't let her get rid of it I was like please can I have it so she let me have it, it has the coach leather tag here and it's just that quintessential buttery leather there's marks on it it definitely doesn't look perfect but one side is good enough I could still wear it so if I wanted to have that vintage coach vibe I could definitely use this I don't pull it out that often but you know, it's there in my collection. Next is one of my favorite bags from high school. It looks like garbage now, but I keep it for the memories, and that is my pink Dooney & Burke, which is very discolored with a rainbow zipper. I would love to find one of these bags in a good condition. This rainbow zipper was so iconic from Dooney & Burke. 
It has the little heart Dooney Burke here. I was so obsessed with this bag. It's the cutest little thing. And my mom got the one in the orange. So we had these at the same time. And again, when she was cleaning out her closet, I was like, please, can I have the orange one? Because this one's actually in a condition I could still use it. I don't know how mine got so discolored. It looks like from this leather, it's only discolored up here near the leather. And this one still looks fine, or maybe because this is orange, you can't see that there's any discoloration. So, yeah, I just love these. These will always be in my collection for memories. They're not ones that I really use a lot. I think I actually got this bag in middle school, but it's my juicy bowler bag. Like, how 2000s is this? And I got the most loud, obnoxious color combination there was. And I just love it. It says Queen of Couture on one side and La Couture on the other side. It has a little juicy zipper. It has the little hang tag. It just, ugh. Everything about this is just so 2000s and it's just something I will always keep and cherish and I have pulled it out like maybe once in every couple of years just for the memories. It's something I will never get rid of because there's such memories to this bag. This next bag is the one that really started my obsession with very obscure and unique bags. I think I got this in middle school. This is way before I had designer bags and it's not designer or anything but it's the Paul Frank and Hello Kitty little bag. This is not even real leather. I think it's like a faux leather. There's marks on it and everything, but I mean, I don't know why I keep this, but there's just something about this bag that I just like cannot let go of. I feel like I should just use it once for fun, but I just keep it for memories, really. It's just a cute little tiny bag, and I thought it was the cutest thing when I got it. I'm obsessed with Hello Kitty, and back in the day, I loved Paul Frank, too. I was so into that in, like, middle school. So having this, like, little collaboration bag, I think this was the first bag that was some type of collaboration that I ever bought. More bag from high school. This one, I don't know, yeah, this was a high school bag. This is my Mark by Mark Jacobs slouchy, I don't even know what you would call this, bowler bag? But it has this like gold woven leather. This is such a different bag. It has a lot of signs of wear. It has this like plastic coating on the gold leather that's like kind of coming off. It's such a cool piece. It's quite heavy, but it does have a shoulder strap. This again is one of those pieces that I used to death. It was when I didn't have as big of a collection and I just thought this was the coolest big like New York City vibe bag when it was back in the day when I was dreaming of moving there. It has holes in it so I could probably never sell it but I just keep it for the memories and I take it out every now and then. Now we'll get into some more like clutches and smaller bags. Clutches I don't like to spend a ton on. I have a few designer ones, but they're usually a multi-purpose, like a wallet on a chain or something like that. So for actual clutches, I don't like to spend a ton. I don't have so many events that I really need a designer clutch. So I have this really fun BCBG one. This has taken me through so many events, so much like clubbing, like all the different things when I used to do that. This is just such a fun event bag with a black dress. I believe I got this one on sale as well and it's just something I keep around and as neon goes in and out of fashion, I use it more when it is in fashion and when it's not, you know, it just sits on the shelf and waits for the next neon trend. Another really cute clutch I have is this skinny dip clutch. This reminds me of like the little Alexander Wang shiny one. But honestly, those shiny materials are not that expensive. This has a chain, so you can actually wear it like this. You can also wear it like this on a chain, or you can just carry it like a clutch like this. So this is such a great evening bag. It just has the sparkles, and it's just kind of fun and slouchy, and you can play with it, and it didn't cost a lot. I really love brands like Skinny Dip for these like occasional bags. Do things that are like on trend without exactly copying the designer. It's more like inspired by. So. Yes, it looks similar to like that Alexander Wang, but you can definitely tell this is not the Alexander Wang version. It's their own take on it. So in that case, I think brands that have their own take on a trend are a really good way to get these kind of occasional bags that you're really not gonna get designer money use out of. So that is why I go to Skinny Dip for these type of things. This is a little like clutch pouch from Poppy Leesman. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but this was an artist collaboration, and I just thought this was so cool. I believe this is faux leather, if I remember right. I really don't use this often, but I just think this is so cool. 
The inside is the only thing, it's like sticking together because it's lined in this like really cheap kind of faux leather. I can definitely tell that's not real leather. I would probably line it with like a dust bag and then put things inside it just to make sure like my things didn't stick to the inside. really love artist collaboration pieces like in general. It's a great way to like wear a piece of art. Another bag that might surprise you is I have a little Supreme messenger bag. Um, as girly as I am and as feminine as my style is, the other side to my style is very streetwear and loungewear and Supreme is one of those brands that I just love. Their t-shirts are so soft. I do have a collection of them. Every time I go to London, I pop into the Supreme store and I have this little messenger bag and I don't use it often, but when I'm wearing a pair of like Nike sweatpants and a Supreme t-shirt, this is just a good casual bag to pop out for errands. If you're going somewhere more casual or doing something kind of outdoors, this is like a nylon material. You don't have to worry about it. And it's just kind of cool. It has a Supreme print in the fabric and then it has a logo here. So it's just a small little bag. It has a zip pouch on the back. The next bags on my list, I'm gonna just show them all together, are something that I pick up almost every time I go to India. I love the markets in India. It's, they're just so beautiful. There's like gorgeous fabrics everywhere and I always pick up these little clutches. So I have like a little mini one, has a little mirror work on it. It's like these patchwork clutches. This one is a solid fabric, but a lot of them, I really like the ones where they're patchwork like this. And what they do is just take scraps of extra borders that they use for like sari material and they like make these little pouches. They're really cheap and inexpensive, but I really think they're super fun. And honestly, when you wear this with something very simple, it's such a nice pop. It's kind of a bit of me, like all of this color and these patterns, I think they're so beautiful. I love picking up fashion pieces and handbags that really remind me of my trip and the country that they're from and I think it's just such a beautiful way to experience different cultures is through their fashion and I know like a lot of my Indian friends wouldn't be caught dead carrying these bags because it's like from the market it's not like a classy kind of a thing but when I go I'm like I just want to go to the market and like look at all the beautiful fabrics and get these bags and I know that it's kind of a touristy thing to get these bags and shop at markets a lot of the time but I really just think that they're so beautiful and you can get any kind of color to like suit what you like and I just think they're just really really fun so yeah if you're ever in India go to the market see all the beautiful fabrics and the bags and you can find some just gorgeous pieces this bag is also from India but my mother-in-law gave this to me my in-laws are from Mumbai but my mother-in-law had gone on a trip to a different part of India I don't remember where now but she brought back this gorgeous gold fabric clutch and this is just so beautiful a little more elegant and a little more sophisticated way to bring the gorgeous Indian fabrics and weaves into something that I can use for an occasion. This is also one that's really beautiful when I go to an Indian wedding. It matches with a lot of my Indian wear. There's always some gold in there somewhere. So this is a bag that I keep around for special occasions. One more bag from India and it's like this buckety tote bag and I just couldn't pass this up. It has elephants and sequins and it's just so fun. It's a very thin fabric and I would be afraid to put too much in it, but I just thought it was really fun. So I picked it up anyways. So I have this tote bag. I picked this up actually in Croatia. There was a local made shop and they did like suede shoes and belts and bags. I'll find the name and pop it up on the screen. But this was just one of the suede bags. It's like a, it's real suede and it's just like a tote, an empty tote on the inside. And I thought this was just a really great travel bag. And when I just need something to like pop my laptop in long ways and run out the door quickly, this is something I could use. And it's also really nice because there's no branding on it. So this is another one that and when I'm traveling and I don't want to wear brands, this is still a nice, well-made suede bag, but it's not branded. This is a Marc Jacobs tote I've had since like high school. I used to use this as my like school bag for some time. And then my workout bag for some time. I've had this forever and it's like, even when I got it, the colors were not even really me, but I just thought it was so cool and so unique and there's so many different pockets and you could fit so much in it that I keep it around. It's a great tote to have. This is such a unique piece. It has the big, huge Marc Jacobs tag on it, which was very indicative of their bags at the time. And I just, I love this tote, even if the colors aren't really my style. Next 
bag I have is one that I got. I used to work in Betsy Johnson in the store when they had them in New York while I was in college. And this is one that I got with my employee discount. And I toted this around for my classes. I thought it was the coolest bag. I was very into the loud fashion at that time. And it's just one of those bags that I will like keep forever. It's just like a big tote bag. It's not one that I use a whole lot now, but I just think it's so fun. Betsy Johnson back in the day, like when she had her own shops, I just love that era of her stuff. I have so many of the dresses from when I used to work there. Literally spent so much of my paychecks like just shopping from Betsy. We used to get our employee discount on the sample sales and I would just load up on dresses. Plus if we met our sales goal, we would get one dress a month because we were required to wear Betsy Johnson clothes when we were working. So between those two things and our employee discount, employee appreciation days where our discount was like 80%, buy a dress or two and I built up a huge collection. So let me know in the comments if you would love to see my entire Betsy Johnson collection. Um, some of it I don't think I fit into anymore because I was much smaller back then. Some of it I still do and I just, ugh, I keep those pieces for memories. So those dresses from back in the day are just something else. Last bag I'm gonna share with you is my Jeremy Scott Longchamp bag. Now I actually have three of these but they're all the same size and they're all in different patterns. I love Jeremy Scott. I'm obsessed with him. I was so obsessed with him in college as well. And I always wanted one of these. I saw this girl walking down the street with the one with the pink bones on it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need your bag. Ended up finding this on Luxury Closet and ordering it. And then once I used it for a couple of trips, I knew. I was like, this is perfect. Because here's the thing. When you fly in the US, your carry-on is done by the size. They don't typically weigh it. Like, there'll be some obscene amount of weight it'll be like oh it can't be over like 40 pounds or something your carry-on but it just has to be that size restriction here in Dubai it's not the same if you fly Emirates they weigh your carry-ons and if you put a laptop in a rolly bag you're done with that weight limit so this can fit like this is how I travel with my luxury bags I put them in this really lightweight long champ and this is my carry-on when I travel with my luxury bags thank you guys so much for watching I know this video is a little all over the place I'm gonna try to edit them where the bags make a little more sense in order but I was just kind of like picking up and showing you as I went um, a lot of these contemporary bags are like memory bags or very occasional bags so I definitely use my designer bags more and I am selling quite a few of my like daily or like newer contemporary bags. So if you want to check out what I do have available for sale, head over to my Instagram. There's a highlight that says preload bags for sale. You can check there. Once I receive payment, I remove the picture. This probably won't be a yearly series because I don't buy a whole lot of contemporary bags, but I will do unboxings or videos on my newer contemporary bags when I do buy them so I can keep you guys updated. Or maybe I'll do that over on my stories as well. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. Also where I show you how I style my handbags in my daily life and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!